What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Last Days of War cast. We are Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I am Rob. I'm Danny. I'm Beats and Beats. First on the agenda, boys, shots. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> How we doing, Danny? Good, man. Just hanging out. Um, <clears throat> kicking back, building some... Uh, me and your cousin built some light boxes, put them together, did the lighting in it, and powered them up. And so we got some ego risers. I think we still got some paint to do on it. And uh, other than that, man, we're uh, we're looking good. We're ready to oh, roll. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. Josh, doing good, doing good. Same thing. Danny was talking about getting those boxes together, and then uh, we got some more stuff coming in that's going to be making the show look pretty good. We're not going to put too much details into. Uh, Drum set's going to look nice. Uh, masks are all getting put together, so slowly coming together. Yeah. <clears throat> what about you, Rob? How are you doing out there in Texas? Oh, surviving, surviving. Just listening to our newest single, Save Yourself. Just dropped this week. Um, seeing the responses from people online and loving it, so keep playing it. It's a fucking banger. We sat on it for too long. Yeah, sure. And with that... <laughs> and with that being said, not only do we have a new single that just dropped, Save Yourself, all streaming platforms, but November 5th, our full album, It Gets Worse From Here, is the title of the album, drops November 5th. Uh, we should have a pre-save link up fairly soon. I believe, Danny, you were going get, to get that to me fairly, uh, fairly soon for the Kid. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, as I can. <clears throat> Hopefully by the end of this week, it shouldn't be too much longer because they usually send it fairly quickly. So, um. But yeah, gentlemen, what are we talking about today? Uh, today we're going to be tackling Limp Biscuit, trying to sue Universal Music Group for two hundred million dollars yeah. back royalties. In yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, this guy didn't do it for the nookie. He's doing it for the yeah, fucking money. Don't. That sounds lie. like a non nookie like, issue, bro. You know what I mean? That's. <laughs> you ch you yeah. changed, Fred. What the fuck, man? It was all about the nookie, bro. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. So what it, why don't you just try to get some nookie from Universal Music Group? So why are they saying they're owed this money? Uh, apparently, they just think that they're owed because somebody, a former staff member, mentioned that there were uh, unpaid dues to Limp Biscuit, And so now they feel like they're entitled to these dues. But it's kind of like, I, I feel like it's kind of... Along the lines of taking the favorite Bible <laughs> quote. Sorry. Oh, Josh completely disappeared. <laughs> he <laughs> sneezed himself <laughs> off the screen. He was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> that would have been funny if he that came back quick. with no shirt. He was just like, fuck it. <laughs> he just came back with no shirt. <laughs> what happened? Just sitting here like this. <laughs> oh, fuck. Sorry. Uh, no, you're fine. <laughs> Limp Biscuit, right? <laughs> so yeah, Limp Biscuit now feels like they're, you know, <laughs> hey, wait, we heard this guy say that there was dues for us. Well, it's kind of like taking your favorite Bible quote. Yeah, it may apply to what you're gonna say or what you're, or how you're trying to use it, but the context from before and after it also play a bigger part in the whole thing. So if you open up and say, hey, you guys owe us money, bro, you ruined Woodstock. Like, Fred Durr single-handedly alone ruined you so Woodstock. <laughs> so it's kind of like you, you, you ruined this whole festival that had legacy to it, and you just, yeah, yeah riot, start crashed into place and you're just like oh, i will man. i will say yeah, that yeah they did it. have uh, a hand in the right part but woodstock ruined woodstock for the prices of water bottles there so they <laughs> they, they fucked themselves yeah i, I mean <clears throat> yeah you you know you're gonna get fucked when you go to a festival that they're gonna be charging you five bucks seven bucks ten bucks for a water bottle why because you're stuck there and you have to pay them. Have we prices. talked about this? I don't remember if we did or not, but Warp Tour coming back, what do you think the ticket prices are going to be for Warp Tour? Because it used to be you get in for a fucking donation, some cans, some fucking whatever it is. But I know for a fact that that's not going to be the case anymore. Yeah, I doubt um, that. Nothing it, I it can afford. Depends. I mean, I think if Kevin Lyman still has a hand in it, it'll still stay authentic. 
Like he'll still keep it punk rock because he still got root. Yeah, he likes to charge kids up the wazoo for ticket prices and parking and then hey vendors and everything yeah. else. But he does still give everybody a chance. Like the thing with Warp Tour was you could hear the local bands coming up and then they get a spotlight at the Warp Tour with these touring headlining bands. So I would say sixty bucks a ticket. Probably now. I think I think you double that, bro. I think they're gonna make it a multi day festival. I it's think, gonna be I think you're gonna see higher it's gonna that. be like fucking Sick New World and, and when we were young fest, I think it's gonna be three hundred dollars a ticket to get into this motherfucker. Uh, so. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just having wish yeah. thing. Oh me too, man. man. Keep me too. Punk rocker. I'm going one fifty. How many warp tours did you guys go to, Josh? Never okay. been to one. Rob? <laughs> never been to one. My thing was Ozfest. I went to all the Ozfests. I never nice. did a warp tour. Uh, me, I'm probably five plus. Okay. Uh, I work when I worked for the magazine. We got tickets to warp tour, so it was like. There you nice, go. Danny. Um, go at the checkout. Man. I think the real question is: is how many times have you been sunburned beyond you know? Beyond death. Death. It's so bad. Uh, I can't even tell you. I've been to a oh, bunch of sure. them. You know, I mean, almost all of them. Maybe wow. I don't know. That's Tons. cool. I've yeah. been to one. Well, I mean, like you said, it would always there's always one right here in L.A. and tickets were like fifteen yeah. bucks, you know, or something like that. You know? so, like, so, mm-hmm. Yeah, I've I've been to one. I went to one. I don't I. Don't remember what year it was i do remember it was the year that a day to remember headline and they had like the big blow-up dolls that looked like the pet boy guys it looked like the, <laughs> they looked like pet boy heads on the top uh <clears throat> yeah. that was cool i i did i saw foxy shazam there and they were fucking awesome they fucking killed it yeah <clears throat> um but yeah man uh just festivals in general Unless I'm playing them, I really got no desire to go to one. I don't, I don't, the whole vibe of it and walking around all day, I'm good. I'm good, bro. <laughs> fan of the festival, uh, huh? I don't know. I just feel like it's too much going on. You got to normally two bands you really want to see are playing at the same time. And then you're like, fuck, well, I came to specifically see these two bands and now they're going on at the same time. So which one do I pick? You know, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of that shit. So, um, that's why I just moshed in the middle of the stage. <laughs> well, Rob, you you you, you just Damn. Rob just takes four me. steps and he's at the next stage anyway, so it doesn't fucking like matter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're here. Yeah. Oh man. So uh no, but like the but the best part of Warp Tour was I think like the the mix of bands you would mm. see. Um yeah. I mean, it mainly was punk rock and, you know, rock and roll based, but you did have some eclectic ones. Uh, Eminem. Right. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. You know, Katy Perry played Warped Tour. Like, that's where they got some of their comeuppance was at Warped Tour. Playing with, like, Blink-182 and, hey, here's Deftones. You know, here's... uh, Seven Dust. Here's, you know, there's there were bands of notoriety that were playing this and multiple stages. It was like, yeah, just let me throw me on here. The thing about a festival is it's fun. Like, you go with your buddies, you meet up, you get a couple drinks, hang out in the beer garden, you go down the slip and slides, you know, you do the weird shit. You, like Danny said, you fucking melt in the sun all yeah. day. So it's like, yeah, go hang out in the beer garden water park area and Turn on the sprinklers. Yeah, there you go. You hope that the singer would so clear nice the water bottle. Sun, so nice when the sun finally goes down. <laughs> yeah, <sighs> fuck. No more dying. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> I'll go to this more. I'll go to the next war tour. Part, if they have like tents for like people to take naps in. You know what I mean? I want to take like a two hour nap. <laughs> I want to take a two hour nap at war tour and then be ready to go for the, the next bands. <laughs> You could sleep with that many people around. <laughs> oh man, that's that's scary. Like, hey, I'm just gonna have all my personal stuff and belongings on me. Just bring the just bring the ba- just bring the baby oil. We're good to go. <laughs> <Ooh-wee>. 
<laughs> no. So how, I, how, I don't know if I can do it. What do you think is going to happen with this Limp Bizkit thing? You think they're going to win that? I think if they don't have receipts, no. it's a uh, lost cause. You know what I mean? That's a lot of money, man. That's a big hit for a label mm-hmm. to take. You know I mean? That's a lot of money. But why Why would a band, you know, I know it's Limp Bizkit, but it's just like, why would you wait? Or, I mean, is it really worth yeah, like, why did it take so long? Ready. Like, yeah, I don't know. There's like a, a couple areas of concern with this where it's just like, wait, where did you come up with that number? Like, is that due for inflation? Like, are you setting it? You 200 know? million. Like, oh, shit. Dude, he's got to oh, pay back the... the Loserville tour. <laughs> he's got to cover the cost. His price of every Corey Feldman shit on tour. <laughs> I still can't believe you had Corey Feldman uh, open up that tour, dude. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> the whole the whole friggin' time, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see if it was like a one-off or maybe like his hometown or some shit, but the entire tour, bro? That's crazy, dude. Yeah. That whole lineup. Like, let's be honest. Like, it was kind of just like, what the fuck? And like, he's, pull- he's pulled shit before and, and like, we talked about the whole snot thing when he was bringing back snot it's just like dude fred nurse is just a piece of shit all the i honestly don't even know who else was guy. on that bill but, other than Corey feldman was trapped on it <laughs> well it was hosted by a riffraff if you told me wasn't there a hip-hop artist too well, it was hosted by riffraff riffraff who the fuck is that so it's just like dude you see what i'm saying like um what when it's hosted by Riff Rap. Yeah. If you if you what if you, you told expect? me that Trapped and Five Finger Death Punch are the other two bands on this tour, I'd believe you. So <laughs> I don't think they I don't think they were bands. Yeah. I think they were more <clears throat> groups, like Josh was saying. So speaking of Limp Biscuit being an older band and you know, think what you will about Limp Biscuit, but they've had quite a few hits. James Hedfield was talking about uh, <clears throat> bands only playing their hits on when they play shows, when they do tours, when they've been around for so many years that they try their best not to become a legacy band. Like, and you got a point, Rob, a little too late for Metallica, right? But like, look at, <laughs> but, but uh, like it's, they, they want to make sure that they're still presenting their new catalog to fans because as much as fans just want to sing along to everything, you still want to open up that door to new stuff to them. Where, so I guess my question is for you guys and you, Rob, you can start with, with you. Um, how do you judge a fine line of like, Hey, these are the hits we're going to play. And these are the new songs we're going to play. And I guess a good starting conversation for that is that, we technically had to do this for this coming up show because yeah, we're not fucking huge. We're not Limp Biscuit or anything like that, but we have a following that knows our music. And so, um, where, like, how did we go about, like, I love the sets that we did because one, we're playing pretty much everything on November 2nd, but specifically that 30 minute set, what was your thought process behind that of the combination of hits and newer stuff? Uh, Mainly, it was just, hey, look, it's going to be a live show. You know, we looked at the bands that we're playing with. Uh, you look at the venue and what, how big it is, and you're just like, fuck. It's we Halloween. Got room to, yeah. yeah, it's Halloween, so we got we got some room to fuck shit up, like throw in all the heavy mm-hmm. songs. And it was like, hit them with the bangers and, you know, system of a clown. Like, if that's who we're playing with, like, system of a down style songs like hit them with the heavier shit and, and the uh-huh. yeah like if this one was more inspired by system like here I would play this one yeah. you know what I'm saying um, as far as them wanting to uh, like keep their music relevant and like oh here's their, the new stuff and as opposed to here's all the classic hits that you guys are wanting to hear I just keep putting out new shit. Like if they keep putting out something, yeah, something might catch this generation with this hit. Uh, like the Rolling Stones or the Beatles. Each time they put out a new album, it's like, oh, they reinvented their sound. They changed themselves, and now a new generation knows them for this yeah. sound. Green Day, for example. 
Mm. You know. Yeah, Josh, what are your thoughts on it, bro? <clears throat> well, being the drummer, I don't really get much say <laughs> in what song we're gonna pick. So it's I'm happy if we can pick a set list and stick to that bitch all the way through <laughs> and not from week to week rearrange the order, so yeah. to speak, because like having to build up the stamina stamina, whatever you want to call it to do the 45 minute set from beginning to end we have a quite a few new songs that require some work <clears> that i'm excited about to play they're <clears> like rob said definitely going to be heavier so if you're looking for some softer stuff we're going to try and throw one or two in there to mellow it out but it's definitely <clears> going to be a more high energy impact show <clears throat> but like you mentioned it's halloween we're trying to have some fun and then on the second, we're going to bring everything we got for you guys, and we hope you guys have a good yeah. time. As yeah. far as picking the song, I'm just happy to play the songs. I mean, I think we should always try and put at least one new song every show if possible, and if there's a, a call-out for something we didn't play, we're capable of doing that too because we always try and practice all of our songs at least every once in a while so they don't stay like rusty. We keep them fresh in the brain. But as far as these two shows coming up, like I think we're pretty locked in for everything, so to speak, what we're going to do. And luckily for us, we have the cues in our ears, so I know what goddamn song I'm doing before <laughs> we start. And we're good to go. Oh, yeah. What about you, Danny? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's a good move, man. You, you know, they, they obviously want to make new music, so of course you're going to support it, you know, and, and put it out there and you want to show it to your fans, mm -hmm. right? But, yeah, I mean, you, you got to uh, – it's got to be pretty tough for that band because with with such a huge catalog of like really great songs that their fans all love like yeah you <laughs> want to hear a bunch of stuff you want to hear this that the other thing but um you know you also have those fans that want it <clears throat> want it to be all that new stuff so you got you got to mix it up you know yeah definitely have to uh appease to to both of those yeah you know? definitely yeah no it's it's interesting like as far as for us i got a lot of people that ask are you playing remain untamed and i'm like on the second not on halloween and they're like okay cool i'll make sure i'm there you know <laughs> I'm like okay like it's it's one of those things where like like the people have their favorite songs you know and it's cool to see that we have a fan base that's like that now and i love our 30 minute set that we have for a whole Halloween show because granted we're not playing remain on team there, but it is such a fucking, like I told the first time we played it uh, at rehearsal, Danny, remember I told you, I was like, I fucking love this 30 minute set. It's just a, it's just a one, two punch to the face, yeah. like quick. And the one like slow song that we have in there being the newer one of the, of the ones that we have being same. It's even though it's a slower song, it's still that fucking, that bass swell right before that drop, and when that fucking song kicks in, it's still heavy hitting. It's it it, it, yeah, it may be a, a, a ballad or whatever the fuck you want to call it, but it is a heavy hitting song, and it fits that it fits that bracket of uh, what is it like six or seven songs that are in that thirty minute set uh, perfectly. I just think it, that we did a really good job of that. I'm really excited to play the newer stuff for people. I think it's like it's like smack dab in the middle. Yes, too, it's right. It? I think I believe it's like the third or fourth song. I think it goes. Uh, yeah, I won't, I won't say the whole set here. Yeah, <laughs> I won't say the whole set here. But I'm pretty sure it's it's like the third or fourth song. But uh, but yeah, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. As far as Metallica goes, uh, they can play whatever they want. Um, I'll never go see them play. I don't give a shit about them. But like, <laughs> uh, I'm just not a big Metallica fan. I never have been. Uh, but yeah, uh, Danny, let's change subject really quick here before I get fucking jumped for talking shit about Metallica. Um, <laughs> you saw this interesting, uh, topic on TikTok right before we got on here. Do you want to just show the video really quick? You have the capability of pulling that up? Uh, oh, shit. okay. So while he's, while he's looking for this video, I'll, I'll kind of describe what it is. Uh, there's a study that went, that happened where, they have proven that two people uh, communicated for the first time while sleeping in their dreams. And uh, that's just, it's kind of crazy that we've reached that point to like, 
Inception. Here, here we go. Researchers at REM space just confirmed that they had two people communicating in REM sleep, and they can prove it. For the first time, two people have successfully communicated in their sleep. <laughs> Further down in the article, the researchers state that they believe that communicating in REM sleep and the possibilities that it will bring will be the next after AI. That that's going to be the next step in technology. And when you think about it, it sounds pretty amazing. I think if we can get the next 10 or 15 years without killing each other as a species, we are going to see some of the most magnificent, magnificent advancements in the human brain and science. <clears throat> so first of all, that last part, so long as we don't destroy ourselves as a civilization in the next 10 to 15 years, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very scary possibility. So a bit like, fuck, um, Rob, what are your thoughts on this communicating during dreams? <laughs> I see you laughing over there as it's being played. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm, I'm known to do this too, but my wife also likes to communicate during a REM sleep too. <laughs> You know, don't touch that. Don't touch that. <laughs> you know, it's 250. What? Who are you talking to? Just, you know, just having communication. Oh, sorry. I was, he, doesn't, he doesn't do it so much <laughs> now, but my son used to talk in his sleep a lot, too. Are you guys sleep talkers? <laughs> Only when I'm drunk. Mm. <laughs> uh... I'm not, but my wife can be, and the hilarious part is if she does sleep talk, she's only telling her brother off. <laughs> so it's like she goes back to childhood and goes back to when they're fighting with each other. That's funny. <laughs> what about you, Danny? Are you a sleep talker? No, I'm not a sleep talker, no. He's a sleep um, farter. But I will say that uh, I think you might have mentioned it before is – Sounds a lot like uh, Demolition Man. Yeah, know? it's very Demolition Man. It's very Inception. It's – you know, you just and then you, you get to uh, you know do your thing in a dream. Hear me out, dream. You could do bro. butt stuff in a dream. Dream Fight Club, bro. A dream, a dream Fight <laughs> Club, bro. No, okay, Rob. So Rob, you could have sex with your buddy. You know, oh, cool. so finally. <laughs> oh man, that's just that's weird well, though, that's... especially because of the video game. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. Oh, great. Now you get to play while you're asleep. Oh, fucking shoot me. But it could lead to, like, uh, full-on dream wars. You know what I mean? Let's all have a war in the dream. Nobody dies. Well, hear me out. Let's go. Hear me no, out. So, so no. check this out. So you get arrested one day, and then you, you go to a police station, and they put this thing on your head, and they go, what did you do? And then they could literally watch it. That's what this technology. Oh, to be able to like to. trick, like minority. play, yeah, <laughs> Minority Report. That's a dope movie. That's what I'm saying. So it's not just like we're not probably not going to see just like crazy stuff in video games and like you know like adult entertainment shit. We're going to see fucking you know investigation and fucking laws about it. It's going to be nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. They're going to yeah. make you work in your sleep. I guarantee it. Like yeah. you have to work two and, jobs. One and they're gonna one. and they're gonna fucking show you ads while you're ads, doing it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it's like welcome to Amazon Dream. This <laughs> <laughs> shit is due dude. for Amazon oh, Dream. I can't split them. I pay my subscription. We need to deliver these dreams. <laughs> Come on, we're trying to break a million. <laughs> you got to clock in there. I'm trying to deliver oh, dreams. Fuck. These yeah. aren't fucking dreams, bro. These aren't dreams. Uh, you know. Oh, all these dreams are leaking. <laughs> oh, all I know yeah. is if, if you can get away with that dream thing, though, if that's real, my wife is in some serious trouble. <laughs> that's oh, no. what I'm saying. Uh, then there's there's a so, lot of people. She's going to be start so afraid to fall asleep. Right? You know? She's yep. going to be like, I'm never sleeping again. Yeah. Um, other thing that was in the news is there, uh, Harry King, a player, mentioned that you would like to be portrayed in movies by the what rock. the fuck <laughs> by the rock? <laughs> well, so do I. So do I. <laughs> I feel like we all should be. It should be four rocks Fine. right here. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like they're both big dudes, but one's jacked and the other is Carrie King. Like 
<laughs> yeah, isn't Kerry King like five three too? Isn't he short? <laughs> Is he really? <laughs> yeah. yeah he's, I he's thought he like, wasn't look... much bigger than Glenn Danzig. Yeah, I mean he's 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 noticeable. I mean, he's got a presence to him, but he's not. I mean, yeah, he's fucking way bigger than me. I shouldn't he's be not, saying a damn yeah. thing, but I'm still like Rob's the rock. Like, I probably and then you, I'm like, you all look little. Unless it's like we're going to like a basketball game. And like, hey, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask you. I'm not even going to ask you. You know? Um, well, what are you going to ask? I'll tell you. <laughs> that's, not what, that's not what he was. If gonna he's ask. if he's gonna be played by uh by the Rock, then I want to be played by Dave Batista. Let's go. So who oh, you got? Oh, do we have? Yeah, to here we go. Here you go. Pick a wrestler. Who's playing you? Go. <laughs> go. Who's fucking? Who are you picking, you? Robin? Why is it uh, the Undertaker? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna Undertaker. say who? <laughs> yeah. I was like, now. I was like, who is it, Robin? Why is it the Undertaker? <laughs> I already knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew where this was going like that. All right, Danny, we got Josh or Josh. Josh. Um, because I'm skinny as shit and small, it would either be X Pac or CM Punk. X Pac would be dope, dude. I like that one. And CM Punk, yeah. Danny, who you got? He's all Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, uh, I go, I go, John. I go, John Cena, because you. There you go. <laughs> I like that. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Hell yeah. Oh, man. I can see you actually being played by John Cena. Oh, uh, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, well, I mean. And who's going to do what is The Rock going to do then? You know, take the day I off mean, or what? Who, The Rock? Yeah, they got to get The Rock, but now it's going to uh, be John Cena. Yeah, so. he's going he's gonna to be doing a Fast and Furious movie. <laughs> oh, man. Are they yeah. still making those? Jesus. <clears throat> uh-huh. oh, Probably another 20 coming out. <laughs> next week all righty guys uh once again thanks for listening make sure you're checking out all the links in our bios to absolutely everything we got going we have two shows coming up halloween night district in redlands november 2nd goodfellas and ranch um check out our latest single save yourself november 5th we've got the new album dropping please you know the drill check it all out thank you so much this has been the last days of warcast we're out <laughs>